Hello, right, so I've done a couple of little things. I don't know if they're going to work. I'll find out soon. Um, first thing I did, I extended this push rod. Now, I don't know if you know, but this piece is solid. That piece on the end is solid, and the middle piece is tubular. And this end piece presses into the tubular piece, and that end piece presses into the tubular piece. And you can see there where I extended the push rod before. So what I did, I knocked it apart at this end and put a stack of washers there. So I'm going to trial assemble it. The thing is, that will put that umbrella part higher. I don't know if that will make it clash with the bottom of that. So I'm going to trial assemble it and see what happens. There, that's it. Okay, so that goes there. That goes there. I made a gasket. You need to be able to. That's it. You need to be able to feel it in. That's in there. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that those washers will be okay. Now, I think is is that down on the cam? Is that down on the cam, or is it sitting on the washers? I imagine it's down on the cam. I think it'll be okay. Let me let, let's take this out. Let's well, that's how far that sticks in. Is that enough to touch on the cam? Can you see it in there? Look. I'm guessing it is, because I can see like shiny bits. There's a cam, hang on. Oh, there's a cam. Ooh. Getting rusty. Hmm. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. Right, I'll just go and give this a clean. So that can go in there. So this is supposed to just be a little roundup of what I've been doing rather than in progress work. Okay. Here's my modified spacer. I clean the edges up with a grinder, you know, like a sanding disc. I think that goes, that should go like that. I might put a bit of fresh Hylomar on. At least that, that isn't all bowed like the bottoms of the uh, fuel pump stands tend to be. Now, I, I do think that the fuel pump is gonna touch on the manifold. So I'm gonna file the corner there. I think that's a bit, I think that's a bit bowed, I'm not sure. I'd like to just maybe just skim that very slightly and um, file that there, that corner. Okay, back in a bit. Just taking a cut to flatten the bottom of the um, flange there. I don't have to deal with the counter bar to go over the tubular part, so I'm just I let it run. I'm letting it run eccentric. I don't want to 
take it too far because I lit that. Right, that's okay. Yeah, just cleaned up now, just cleaned up. It's a very narrow um, piece there though. Okay, right, good. Okay, I'll get this cleaned up then and I'll get it bolted down. Okay, I've done a, a dry fit and the pump was very very close to the manifold so I've just took the grinder and just reduced that corner there just took a little bit off that corner I haven't gone through the casting so now I'm ready to kind of fit it up I'll, I'll put some stuff on here I'll do it I'll do it dry first because what I'm concerned about is have I lengthened the push rod by too much? That fits down now, but I need to know that it fits down flush when the um, push rod is, is at its highest. Okay, so where's that now? That's about the highest, isn't it? About there. That is the highest, okay. You gotta make be able to make sure that this goes all the way down, like that, which it does. So that's okay. So actually that's around about the amount of stroke that it's gonna get. Okay, I need to put the tube on the underside. Okay, that's good. It's just a good sanity check to be able to make sure that it will fit down without stressing anything. Okay, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. There's a piece of tube in there, and I've just put a little knurl on the end of it. And that's the piece of tubing that fits up underneath the fuel pump stand. And it's not exactly tubing, it's just rolled sheet metal. So what I did, I just put a, a socket up the middle of it so I could clamp it in the vise and hold it steady to knurl it. So, th th because this kept coming out of the fuel pump stand, so that's going to make it stay in really tight. Okay, that's all bolted down. I used some of those flat, thin washers off the French flathead. Saves the nut digging into the aluminium. That's really nice and solid and um, when you pull this, can you see, yeah there's my glove at the back look, so there is clearance and when I offered it down there was no rock in that direction, it was really nice and solid, it's the best one I felt and when I pull this there's a tiny bit of play left and that's how it feels when it's at the top of the stroke okay that's good pleased with that that was that's basically cost me a day that putting that right but I'm happy that those parts really are as good as I can get them and I think that will seal better than a, a stock one because there's more strength in the flange it won't it won't um, deflect I'm going to leave it at that for today I feel like I've done okay um, I've fitted the fuel pump stand fitted that piece fitted the fuel pump fitted the fuel pipe into the pump made this pipe here which came out okay and I made this and this the other day so that's my preferred method of running dual carbs where you have a T like that um, and I'm not 100% sure if I'm happy about having this type of thing and not that type of thing I, d I don't know what if one is better than the other oh and I need to do something there don't I okay Righto, it's all coming together. I don't think it's far from off from running, to be honest. I've got to decide whether I'm happy to stick with that half-inch stud there 
Um, I might be okay with that because I've got this secondary brace at the back. I fitted that as well today. So yeah, it's all shaping up okay. Righto, I'll leave it at that then. Time for a cup of tea. Okay, I'll catch you next time. Bye. Um, yesterday I made up the fuel pipes and everything there and the thing that was left is is um, the vacuum hookup. I found this fitting. I don't know where it was from. So it's gone to, this is a quarter inch with an olive. So I've got a little bit of quarter inch pipe. I've got another one of these T's there. And I've kind of sleeved down that bit of pipe there to go to the distributor. And I've got a quarter inch bit of pipe in there for the wipers. That's the vacuum wipers. So I'm hoping that's taken care of all the plumbing now. Um, so the last remaining job is to fit the the dynamo, the generator, um, and my the thoughts going through my mind are: Am I happy with that stud, or do I want to try and make a better stud? So anyway, when I've made my mind up. I'll bring you back, but I'm I'm pleased with my progress. Just little bits, little bits all the time. Okay, Jeff's with me. He's been helping me. We've just set the throttle up. Oh, I got um. Oh, I've got a return spring on, haven't I? Here you put it on. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can start the engine. There's no fuel anywhere yet. Looking for leaks now. Okay, there's fuel coming up. Can you hear it at the carb? Yes, it sounds like it's filling the bowls. Normally, oh, I was going to say what you normally want is for it to stop ticking. Yeah, as the floats come up and shut the supply off. Tell you what, there's some shit in that filter, Mark, to use a colloquialism. Is there? Yeah, yeah okay, I'll have to clean that out. Your float bowl should be full now, then. Yeah. Pipes are okay. I can smell fuel. So I think it's just a case of... Ah, so touch there. Just a touch, okay. Well, I wouldn't rule out that something needs nipping up. Let's not worry about it. Yeah, it's really like, not a bit oil on the thread, but... Yeah. Let's just see what it's like when it... Let's see if it starts then. Thank you, Doug. Right, ignition on. I ain't got a choke. Pump, pump. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, Mark. They're both drawing.
but you know, <laughs> on a test of what? That's all right, I mean, yeah. no leaks. No leaks at all. So there we go, it works. I've got a little bit of work to do because this ain't very good, is it? play about with this to see what I can do. The ignition light's on, look, because it's not charging. I wonder why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Hello. I have done some experimenting and I've come up with a linkage that works apparently pretty well I'll just show you what I tried to do I tried to get these levers off these scrap carburetors that one and that one couldn't get them undone so I gave up on that besides that that would that would mean I would have to change this because I can't clamp onto there besides the other thing is I never really liked that idea because this is so small that piece is supposed to clamp on there um all the linkages that i could see for sale are quite expensive i mean you know i like to just fix stuff with what i've got lying about now this doesn't look pretty but it is just a, a mock-up i haven't got the accelerator pumps attached but my idea is i wanted this ball here on the centre line of this rod. In other words, this ball, this ball and this ball, I wanted them all in line. So I've made a little metal bracket there, which the ball is mounted there. This is clamped to there and locked with a screw, hooked around the rod. So it, it doesn't try and pivot at that point there. And now, when I operate the pedal, it works really nicely. There's none of that twisting motion. Also, I was able to use this standard um, length rod, which I believe is part of a set that you buy from Model A. I bought the Model A set and they've been very useful, to be honest. So this, you know... That is working perfectly. That's exactly as I wanted it to work. The only thing is, it doesn't look very pretty. So I, I will have to sort of shape this a bit better. Make it look nice. And um, that's the linkage I'm going to go with. I can adjust my centre distance there. And... That works, and it looks a lot better than this. See, I had that from there to there, but it was it was putting a twist in it every time. That works perfectly now. It's not trying to yank the linkage off the balls. And this screw here is 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 one of those screws, so it's all. Carburetor related. I'm quite pleased with that. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting. Now that I've kind of proved that it works, I might to see, look to see what I can do to make it look prettier. Having said that though, this is adjustable, so, you know, that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, it works. You can see it's, it's putting no... I mean, this is free to twist, look. See, there's no resistance to, to it doing that. But the linkage isn't putting any moment in to make it do that. Okay. Right, there's a few things I don't like. One of them is that these are mismatched. If, if it came to it, I would say I prefer this. This is a lighter one. And I assume it's better because that's got like a big vent hole there, you know, which don't seem like a great idea, does it? 
okay the other thing that I don't like is this this piece here doesn't match that piece there so that's another little thing that I can do to try and make them match a bit better and the other thing is <laughs> I think this looks okay so I might see if I can find another base that's in good that's like this but in good condition I've got lots of parts carbs I'll dig through and see what I can find so I want a new top a new um, idle lever and another base I think it's all coming together very well and it's um, it started up and ran I've readjusted the linkage and slowed the idle a little bit let's see if it'll start again hang on put the key on put the ignition on press the button that's not bad is it that's not even had a pump because the pumps are disconnected at the moment so yeah that's all right and I can slow that down a bit more and I can mess with the mixture screws it did get quite hot before running at that fast idle it'll probably bog if I rev it up because it's got no uh, accelerator pump down at idle that's that that um, spring is enough to get it to idle you see this has actually turned now I think the load on this when it's running is higher than it is when it's not running okay I won't run it too long I think it looks good. I think it's a, I think it's a decent setup. I know. I think it's a decent setup because um, the carbs are well centered. Um, they're possibly very slightly offset to the back but, uh, but only by about half an inch it's a lot better than the normal what they call a I can't remember what they call them standard is it or something where a regular or something like that, where you've got your car first carb in the in the standard place and another one wedged in here it's um I, I like the spacing okay I think this is a bit sort of clunky really just for a vacuum line but you know hopefully it does the job righto that's the culmination of a fair bit of work there I'm taking some measurements from the generator bracket you know the piece that goes in and I'm going to think about making a stud so that's my next job is to make a stud to go in there righto well thanks for following the conversion so far i'll bring you back when there's more to show hello i it's a new day and i've come out and i've reworked that bracket that i made um i think it's got possibilities this piece here was taken from um, like a, an old throttle linkage that I'd got lying about and I bent the end over similar to the other one and I've screwed it on so it goes below 
Um, and of course this is like shaped properly because it's a standard production piece. So I'm hoping that that might work. Uh, it, it appears to work. It ha I have got the accelerator pumps hooked up now. So I'm, go I'm going to leave it like that and see how it stands up under, you know, road test. So the last remaining job is to make a custom stud. I don't want to use that half inch main stud because to be honest I think I need it for an engine. So I'm going to custom make a stud. I've done a drawing. There's my drawing. Half inch UNC and then around about 17 millimeter diameter there a taper around about 15 millimeter diameter there and then a 9 16 18 UNF 9 16 is around about 14 mil so it's 14 mil ish tapering out and then a bigger diameter there now the thing is it might be that I'll do the half inch thread and then have a radius shoulder and like a custom washer that will go there. I might kind of make that piece a washer. The reason that I'm going with a taper is because I want that piece there as big as possible. So it's well, you know, grounded against the face of the manifold. And again, the reason I'm doing that... And the, the reason I feel able to taper it is because these are actually tapered. Now this is a, a Lucas and this is um, you know, USA. And these are wider here than they are there. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll use that to my advantage and go as big as I can here. And um, Bob's your uncle. Okay. Wing it time. Back in a bit. Right, let's try this. Never done one of these before. It's a bit torn here, but I only need that much. I've got to get this down to 0 0.625. And we're at 594. So that's... If it was 95... It'd be seventy thousand, wouldn't it? Five five two five. Hey, that ain't right. Fucking hell, I'm, I'm undersized, aren't I? I've ballsed it up. I'm ten thou down. Oh, you dick. Fucking hell. That's a shame, isn't it? 
because I um, spent a long time doing that thread. Uah! a bit tight okay I'm happy with that Whoa. I need to cut it off about there and put a half inch thread on it Stop filming there, and I'll go. I'll go and finish that in the vice by hand. Don't know what went wrong there, but look at it. I think the dies must have tipped or something. I think these must have tipped, but it's just. Completely trash that thread look. Completely junk. Unless it's something to do with the way that that went in. Just don't know. It did the other one okay though. That's another scrap one. Okay, I've got two scrap ones now. I'll have to have another go because I'm run out of time now. Okay, back another time. Hello. Following yesterday's failures, I had another go and this piece of metal is a piece cut from a, a mini drive shaft, a drive shaft from a classic mini. So it's quite big, you know, it's a bigger diameter than I need, I've got to turn it down. But I have managed to put a half inch UNC thread on it and I think what I want to do is put um, a radius on the fillet and turn this face back a little bit and then make a custom washer and I think I'll make the custom washer from the end here because I don't need a bit, I, I, I can lose a bit on this end so I'm, I'll, I'll use this bit to make the washer first and then I'll, I'll sort it all out I use this die now I don't have a lot of experience with using these dies and when I tried it on the lathe it, it it did that. I don't know where the other piece is. I did one, didn't I? Which had a good thread that end, and then I went undersize at this end, probably on the lathe. But what I realised is it's very important to lock that piece down tight to, to hold these in the correct relationship. I think that was a little bit loose, and these were able to cock like that, and hence cause that. 
that problem there. It is, it is a really good set of dies and uh, the die stock. It's a vintage set. I showed it in one of my videos once. A half inch UNC 13. So another top quality investment at the swap meet. Here's the set. In this wooden box. And it's got taps as well all the way up to three quarter. Three quarter, five eighths, nine sixteenths and then some of the smaller ones are missing. But I've got dies as well all the way up to three quarter. They're really good. Um, but I didn't realise that you had to lock them solid. I've got this cheap set here and I tried to use the 916 UNC die I tried to use this just just to finish that that one that's on the car and it it wouldn't it wouldn't take a cut oops you know useless right my next challenge will be to put this 916 thread like this one Onto that one. Oh, I'm going to do, do that washer first. Okay, back in a bit. So it only needs a little bit more. Oh, I'm turning it in the chuck, aren't I? Because it's turned in the chuck, that's lost the orientation, hasn't it? So I'll just do I'll have to just do it with a die now. Decent thread that. So the question is, will the die be able to cut it?
all right actually that's a good fit now and I think it's just this nuts are a bit damaged at this end hello future Mart here I'm just come down to the garage I'm editing the video that you're watching because I suddenly thought of something that would explain why that nut was going tight because it was a long nut like that um, balls did up look I'd got the I'd got the lever set to metric I haven't touched this before or since and it's set to metric so that has introduced a, a small pitch error when I did the single point cutting and the die can't correct that that die that die that I showed cut one thread and it's so cheap it just wouldn't cut another all it did was rubbed it was a waste of time but that I've just had a light bulb moment as I was sitting editing it looking at me struggling and that's why it's a 125 over 127 error so there you go I messed up okay back to the normal program What I'll do, I'll, I'll, um, I'll get one of the standard studs and wind this on and off a few times. It's alright. Okay. Okay. I'm done messing about now. I'll get that fitted. Back in a bit. Hello. Right, I've got that thing fitted. I took that shoulder back a bit and I tried to die these threads down a bit further but that that cheap die just does not cut at all it it, it was just really struggling so I'll leave it at that and I'll make a washer to go here if need be so there's my little washer that I made there so that this goes firm against that and in you know it's gone in well so I'll, I'll offer the um, generator in now. Yeah, that, that stud, I mean, if I had an easy way of cutting the thread, I'd make another one. You know, it's took me two days to make that one. It's too long, the thread wants pulling back. And I think that nut that's on there is only supposed to be like a lock nut. But it'll do for a temporary job. But it's in there. And it's like I said, it's made from a a mini drive shaft, so it's you know should be plenty strong enough. Okay, I'll leave it at that for now, and I'll have a think if I want to mess about with it more. Um, the only other thing that I need to do is something with this. I've had it running, but um, I've had it running, but I've lost this positioning for this bracket I'll have to have a think about how I can do this okay maybe put it the other side but and extend the wires or something right out shall we just um, see if it'll start and just let it spin and see the belt going around I'm, I'm looking at it and it doesn't look like the belts aligned very well I don't know if it's something to do with this print on there that's a bit off let's see if it'll start it should do Ooh. I won't do anything, I'll just um, press the button. Yeah, 
the alignment looks okay. I think it was the the print. But it's on and it's running. And it's clear of that pipe. So yeah, that's good. So a couple of little jobs to do. That was a lot of hard work making that stud. Okay, right out. Like I said, there you go, mini drive shaft. Look, that's what the studs made out of this this shaft material. Okay, so it ought to be good stuff, hadn't it? The fact that that started up right from cold, from scratch, without even a pump, means it's probably running too rich. Still, you know, I haven't even turned any screws or anything yet. But that is really solid on there. Okay, righto, thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then, bye. Hello, um, everything's still in place, but I've took the stud out. Because I wasn't really happy with it, wasn't really overjoyed with it, um, and I've done what I probably should have done in the first place, which is just take an original stud and put a half inch thread on it. Now the thread isn't quite as good as that thread, but it is a thread. The problem is, is that the outer diameter of this is slightly bigger than the root diameter of the other thread. But it has a thread. So I'm going to go with this. If I ever fancy doing a bit of a turning exercise, I will have another go at it. Or I might buy a decent, a decent die. The problem is, is that the die cut one thread and then gave up the ghost. And I haven't been able to cut a decent one since. But this will be okay, I think. So I'll get this fitted and then see how it looks. Uh, that nut threads all the way down this one. This was the, an original. It's actually a French one, but it's, you know, UNF and UNC. Okay, I'll bring you back when I've got that one in place. Hello, um, I put the other stud in and that nut goes on nicely there, so that's in place. I put my little back up bracket there, my little bracket, you know, extra strength. That could be shortened, uh, you know, by about two inches, easy. Um, and I've connected my and armature wires. I fired it up. Uh, and it's charging. The, I've got a little problem. If I if I raise the revs with the pedal. It's charging up. But the revs are kind of sticking up. I need to look at the linkage. If I put my foot under it and lift it, it's okay. So I need to see why the linkage is stiff. But you know, hey, minor problem. So yeah. So so yeah, another little bit of progress made. It took me probably about 15 minutes to make that stud and I've spent a day and a half trying to make one from scratch so you know, it just shows I I'm just not up that well up on my machining skills. Well, I could probably make another one now having learnt all the lessons but um I don't need to, I've got one there that works. Sometimes you learn your lessons the hard way, don't you? The dogs are playing up. Okay, I'll knock it off now and uh, go and see what's the matter with the dogs. Okay.
back in a bit then hello welcome to Mark's garage I've been working on this um, dual carb conversion again I've spent all day on this and have struggled with odd things the first thing I did which went okay actually that uh, that wasn't a struggle I made a bracket for the coil so you can see there there's a little piece of angle iron bolted down and there's another piece of angle iron welded to it and then they're all cut ground shaped threaded the coils bolted on so you can see that the, the wire will just shoot straight down there to where it needs to go avoiding the avoiding the belt I hope <laughs> okay yeah close to but avoiding the belt um, the thing that I've really really struggled with is the throttle linkage I decided I didn't like this um, I couldn't achieve full throttle using that rod I couldn't get this close enough with this end uh, so I've abandoned this you know the the one of these that was like uh, the S shape the one I had on with the single carb well I've cut it and threaded the ends and made a little brass piece to go in the middle I can't call it a turnbuckle because it's um, it's not left and right hand thread but it, it's it's a coupler I suppose um, I found some nuts for lock nuts so that piece with the ball on it that I had um, I rebent it and I've got it bolted there and I've adjusted it so that this is as close to that as can be can't get it any closer than that um, and I'll show you why in a minute and then I can adjust this end to synchronize the two carbs so that can be adjusted here um, and what I oh and I've put um can you see there's a little bracket there a little piece a tab with a spring and then that is tied in with this piece of welding wire for the want of something better at the moment down to the base of the coil the beauty of that is that it will it will create a downward pull on there which will keep this which will keep this in alignment so now if I take this piece of wood and lean in the car and press that on the pedal you will see that if as I go to the full pedal I it stops and then there's a little bit of almost like a kick down feel and I'll show you where that's coming from it goes full throttle and then you get the the pull on the link see can you see it stretching the link there that means when I floor the pedal I've got full throttle I was always told make sure you've got full throttle there must be a lot of cars out there that you know imagine you've put extra mats in and things and stuff like that and it just stops you from getting it what I might do is make another link for here for if if I if I need to but I don't think I do at the moment so anyway there we go um, I've got the accelerator pumps disconnected at the moment because uh, you know as I've been messing about with it I don't want to be squirting fuel down but with that extra spring there it's quite solid I, I, I hope that that will yeah I, I hope that that spring will make sure it always returns to you know idle it doesn't hang up and I can always make it a bit tighter if need be by shortening this link 
Okay? A lot of frustrating work there. A lot of very frustrating work. But I think that what linkage works well. It works better than that one that I had that came off the side. And I think that spring will help. See, this isn't trying to work its way around to one side or the other. Actually, I think this isn't tightened up yet. Okay. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you that. I've got to connect the coil. Um, that can be connected up. I might slide it up the bracket a little bit. Anyway, that's really solidly mounted. Okay, I'm going to call it good at that. I've had a good session today. Thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye.